there! In this video, I am going to tell you everything you need to know to do science things with your kids from K through grade three approximately is what I'm going to touch on here. Uh, I think that it's important to know that I am, it's really important to me as a homeschooling mom to make sure I'm doing the things I should be doing with my kids. So as I've explored the area of science, um, you know, I've looked through different workbooks and things like that in these younger grades to, you know, see if we were covering everything. And what I found is that workbooks are really unnecessary at this stage of the game. You know, when your kids are young, I think just reading areas that, in, reading about areas that interest them, things that are important to them, be it sharks to spiders to tornadoes, I think that is going to give them the most well-rounded science curriculum as opposed to doing worksheets in a workbook, which often looks something like, you know, if a child was in a forest or if you were in a forest and um, you saw these tracks, you know, circle the animal tracks, signs that animals are here. You know, when they're young, it's so much better just to go for a walk in the forest and look for animal tracks and that's going to have a lot more significance for them. But although we didn't use a formal science curriculum in the younger grades, we did do lots of reading and I think that is the basis of just about everything. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite resources and books for children. Um, I would say, you know, K through grade three, but truly these books, I mean, we use them. My oldest daughter is going into grade seven and I've yet to read any of these books that she and myself couldn't learn something from. So it's certainly not limited to only little kids, but that's a great place to start. One of my favorite nonfiction authors for kids of all ages, like I said, I always learn something from her books, is truly any book by, uh, by Gail Gibbons. She is the author and illustrator. Uh, there's a nice interview with her and Sarah McKenzie on the Read Aloud Revival podcast that I found really interesting. But these books are just fabulous for, you know, like I said, younger kids, but I always learn things from them. So it's a nice amount of text, not too many, you know, not too many words, but the illustrations are just, just marvelous. And, um, you know, it gives them just, it's such a richness of information. So like this one is from seed to plant, but we've read them on so many different topics and I just think they're lovely. So truly, if you want your kids to like science and find it enjoyable, then find the topics that they're interested in and are relevant to them and then look for a Gail Gibbons book on it and read it. And you know, that's the way my kids all feel like science is interesting and exciting because that's always been our approach to it. So you can't go wrong with any of Gail Gibbons books. And then you're probably tired of hearing me say it, but Usborne. I love Usborne books. And um, so some examples of ones that work really well in the science category is Again, their first encyclopedia series. This is the first encyclopedia of science, and it just goes over a wide variety of topics. So it covers things like what is science, weather, seasons, animals, bones and muscles, liquids and solids, forces, energy. I mean, this is a whole science curriculum in and of itself, and the pictures, I mean, this is the one on cells, but the information is just, so nice for kids, you know, as just an introduction, and it, you know, is a good amount of text, wonderful pictures, and so this is a great way. I mean, you can just read two pages of this in your morning time if you do that, you know, a couple times a week, and that is a beautiful science curriculum for a year. And, you know, as they are interested in a topic, then you could maybe stop and get a Gail Gibbons book on it or find some YouTubes on it. Um, Here's another example of a page in here. Um, on the topic of YouTube books, 
Mystery Duck. If you Google or in YouTube search for Mystery Duck, his videos for kids are fantastic. Um, all my kids really enjoy them. They're about five minutes long, they're free, um, and they're just really well done. So that's a great way to add in some science and something that they can do independently. So definitely check out the Mystery Duck videos. And those, like I said, are great for anywhere in elementary age range. So those are really well done. Um, another Osborne one that I really like is the name is a little funny, so don't let that throw you. Um, but they have the first illustrated science dictionary, and then they also have an illustrated science dictionary, which is kind of the next level up. Um, and so my plan is to read through a lot of this with my daughter this year, who will be in first grade. And so this has, you know, this one is uh, they're not real pictures, they're illustrations, but they're very nice and it just covers such a huge number of topics, you know, from living, what makes something living, to plants, um, you know, for, um, matter and, you know, solids, liquids, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, light and electricity. So this is a really, really nice book. And again, you know, in a setting, we would just read two pages. And so that's a good amount there. So like I said, those are very nice. Um, you can find, you know, these Usborne books you can find from a local Usborne distributor. It's always nice to support them. Or um, you can look on Amazon as well. And not all of them, but lots of them will be available there too. So, um, and then the last kind of thing that I wanted to touch on also by Usborne was there, it's the Usborne, uh, beginner series and these are well worth um, the money they're not super expensive but they're hardback which is nice and they are so wonderful for young kids and you know bigger ones too to read through so you know this one is on weather and you can see it's just a really great um, pictures and text again but these to me serve double duty they're really wonderful because um, not only can they give a great am amount of information on a topic but as you have readers who are developing and starting to you know read more independently especially boys boys love to read for information often even more so than they love to read fiction and so they've got so many titles in this series this one is on bats and it is just great for developing readers uh, to read these on their own and they're often very motivated to research you know a topic that they're interested in so yeah these are excellent I didn't touch on experiments, but of, co of course there's lots of books that you can, you know, get to do some hands-on things with kids. Um, once again, Usborne has some nice ones and um, you can look, you know, there's, it's, that's an easy thing to find. You can check out a book from the library and do just a couple experiments. I'm honestly not the best mom at doing experiments, but we've had really good success with mystery science. So it's the same, person as Mystery Doug, it's his company, uh, but this one you have to subscribe to. And they have video lessons and then experiments that you do and for myself, and this is really good for all through elementary, so it's not limited to the early grades. But my kids have really liked that, we've done that some years, and that's the most successful I've been at doing experiments with them, is the videos kind of walk you through it step by step and tell you what you need to do. And also, if I just don't have it together to do an experiment, then we'll watch the mystery science video and lesson, and they always take you through the experiment and the results of it and all the steps along the way. So sometimes we don't even do it. Sometimes we just watch it and that's good enough. But that's another fun way to add some science into your homeschool. And truly, I think this is a subject that can be easy and fun and quick. And hopefully it can be one of your kids' favorite subjects um, when you make it interesting and focus on the areas that they're into. So have fun doing science with your kids and uh, you can check out my, I have two other videos uh, for kids, you know, in that kind of four, five, six age range and then six and up on what we've done for science with those ages. Bye-bye.